Welcome back to CIS 165. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. It's week nine of the class, and that means it's a new chapter. Time to go on to chapter six, events. So let me show you what we'll end up with, and then we'll create it. So I've got this project right here. We're going to ask for a real name, hero name, superpower, and origin. So let's say Peter Parker. He is Spider-Man. Sorry if I'm giving it away. Superpower, Spidey Sense. And his origin, bitten by a radioactive spider. I'll click Save. I get some feedback, and then when I click Show, I get that information back. Let me do another one. Bruce Wayne, hero name Batman, superpower Vengeance. Origin, had a bad night. I can press Enter instead of clicking Save, and it will save my info, and then I can show it. So several things are happening. When I'm writing inside of the origin box, you see how there's a countdown there of how many characters I can write. At a certain point, I'm out of characters and it will not let me write anymore. So these, this is based on events. It's checking how many characters there are, and then when I go over the number of characters, I can't write anymore. If I try to save without filling all fields in, it'll say, please enter all fields. I can reset to start over. Now also what I can do if I close the project completely and run it again and click show, whatever I've typed already still exists. Every other time up to this point, anything that we've created only existed as long as the project was running. But here, even after closing and restarting, it still has items in memory. So we're going to talk about a more permanent solution to storage besides a plain old variable. So let's get started. I'll create a week 9 folder and set up my index file. So we're dealing with chapter 6 now. So in the body I'm going to create a form to collect this information. HTML form tag this needs an ID so I can reference it. We'll call it form hero. There are going to be input fields. So first we'll start with a label. This is the text that appears next to the input field. Real name. The input itself. Type text. Well, the label that I wrote at left, I need to link it with the input field at right. So I'll add a for attribute in real name. This will be an input of real name. So it needs name attribute exactly the same as the for, and then an ID exactly the same as the for. This label is used for this input field, real name. And then it needs an ID because then we can reference it in JavaScript. Break. Next line, I need something for the hero name. Same sort of thing. Next, I need the superpower field. Next up, a superhero origin field. The superhero origin field is a little bit different than the other input fields. This will be a text area. This one's a little odd also because it has an opening and closing tag instead of the regular input tag with only an opening tag. We also have rows attribute. How many rows? Two. Calls or columns. How many columns? 32. 
Besides that, it still has the name and the ID. Next to that text area, I also want to have a span, which will display the number of characters available as we type. So that span will just have a placeholder, but that needs an ID, and we'll call this cars left. C-H-A-R-S, cars, or characters left. How many characters are there left for them to type? Break that for the next line and then our buttons. So these will be inputs of type button. The first one will have a value of save so that they can save the name. Needs an ID, BTN save, so that we can press the button and the JavaScript will react. Another input, this one of type reset, so that we can reset the form. And then a value saying reset, that's the text that appears on screen, an ID BTN reset so that we can reference it via JavaScript. And lastly, an input of type button, value show, I want to show results, and an ID of BTN show. All of this is in that form. We're collecting information. After the form, I'll create a div of just a plain old placeholder with an ID of div result. I want to display results on screen, either success messages, failure messages, results, etc. Looking at the project in the web browser, gives me this so far, and no errors in the console. I want to clean up the alignment of these various things. It looks a little bit out of order, so that'll be some CSS. So I'm going to restyle the form in these various inputs. If we back up into the head section of the project, we can create a style block. We'll then say pound form hero, curly braces. So this is a CSS code that will affect the form, the hero form. We'll add some padding, 1M on all four sides, and a width of 26M. So make the form 26 characters wide, give 1M or one character of padding all around the four edges. Next, any label, we will style by adding a width of 7M, seven characters wide, have it display in, as a block level element and float to the left. So this should align the input fields because there is a consistent amount of spacing. Next, this one's fun. Input square brackets type of button, comma. Input square brackets type of reset. So anything that is an input field of type reset or button, style it in the following way. Float, left and give it a margin of 0.25M. Give it some breathing room. Now this is looking ahead, so I want to add it in now before I forget about it later. But the result of displaying my superhero list is that it's going to be in a table. It will display in rows and columns. So I want to set up some CSS styling now, which will be applied later. These will be classes. So table, style, the table in general, comma, dot table 
style space th, any headings in the table that we create, comma, table style td, any cell. What we're doing here is we're going to style all three of those elements as once, at once by having a width of 85%, a border around everything of one pixel, solid, black, and the table layout will be fixed. So these table styles won't affect anything until later when we actually show results. But these previous CSS styles should be applied now. This is how it looks like before, kind of jumbled up, refreshing, nice and lined up. None of these buttons do anything yet. Well, except for reset. If you start to add information to these items and then reset, it'll reset the form. That countdown doesn't work yet. Save doesn't work yet. Show doesn't work yet. That's all JavaScript. All right, so let's jump to the JavaScript. After our use strict declaration, it's time to create a variety of objects based on what we've got on screen. Var name real equal to empty. We're going to check what's the real name and the hero name and all of that stuff and change it as necessary. So creating a variable with an empty name of real. Name hero, so their hero name, also empty. Superpower, also empty. Super origin, empty. I'm starting off empty because then I want to check what the names are as the person types and then save them to our list and retrieve them and all that stuff. Next, I need to create an element, L form hero, based on document dot get element by ID, the particular form hero that I have at the top. So remember, the form has a unique ID, and here I am creating a JavaScript object based on it. Next, I also need L super origin. That's document dot get element by ID in super origin. Now that makes it seem like in super origin should have been for the one right up here, super origin. Well, one is going to be for the value and one is going to be for us to check if they've typed too much. So that input field, I want to check various properties of that input field itself. So I made an object for it. L car display. This is that placeholder that I've set up before. Cars left. There's that span cars left right up there that is going to count down as the person types. So we'll create a JavaScript object for it. L show result is based on document dot get element div result. The div where I will show results is an object now. L show result. All heroes is an array, so we've got square brackets. This is where we're going to store all of the various heroes we create. It's an empty array at the moment. Max cars, max chars, max characters is how many characters a person can type in the origin field. We will say 140, not in quotes because it's a number. So 140 characters maximum. Next, elements for the various buttons. 
L button save is equal to document dot get element by ID btn save and same for the other two buttons and then the end of our declarations so a variety of variables next after that we will do l char display dot text content equal to max chars so what this does On screen, it displays that we have 140 characters that the person can type. XXX becomes 140 because we're saying the text content of that element will be set to max cars, which is 140. If we're only going to accept that the person type 14 characters, then that changes accordingly, only 14 characters. 140 is going to be a good amount to write an origin. Next, in constructor notation, the superhero object function superhero superhero is going to be defined by name real comma name hero comma superpower and super origin so as we've seen before, we need to then define this name real is equal to name real that is provided and the rest. Now be careful here as you're filling this in and if visual code is giving you pop-ups to help you write your code, be careful that you don't select the wrong one. It is in some sort of order. It looks like alphabetical at times, backwards alphabetical, or most used or something. So be careful which one it is, if you're, especially if you're using the auto-completion. Super origin is equal to super origin. Be careful that you don't set super origin equal to super power. Then a method, info. So we've seen all of this before. This will be putting together all of those values into one. Hero info var is equal to a string that says real name plus whatever this name real is plus whatever their hero name is plus their superpower plus their origin end of line, and all of that will be returned. So we want to press the button to save the name, collect what was written there, group it all together, and store it, so that then we can show it. So after our constructor, function save name we need to check what are the items that were typed at the moment so name real we check that by document dot get element by ID the in real name dot value Give me the value of what was in the in real name field. And the same thing for the others. Once we've captured all of those items, we can start to make decisions on a variety of things. 
First of all, have we saved this superhero before, yes or no? And second, are all the fields filled in? Well, I'm going to introduce a new item here called Local Storage. It's a way to more permanently save information. It's like a cookie. When you visit a website and it stores information on your computer, that's a cookie. Well, our project is going to create a sort of a cookie that is permanent so that when you exit the web browser and come back, the data is still saved. All web browsers let you do this, and I'll see, and we'll see in Chrome where to access them. So first we need to make a decision. If else. What we're asking for here, if a superhero was never saved, else a superhero was saved. So our if will be local storage, notice the capital S, local storage object dot all heroes. All heroes is our array that stores a list of all of our heroes. But we're checking here, did we save our all heroes array in the local storage object? And this is a special object built into the web browser where it can store things permanently. They can be deleted, of course, if you clear out cookies and all of that. But we're checking here, has local storage been used to save all heroes? But we have to further check equals equals equals. This is a triple equals double quotes, nothing inside. Different browsers handle local storage in a different way. And through different actions, local storage can be empty, it can be null, or it can be undefined. So we're checking here, is all heroes empty? In local storage, is it empty? Space, double pipes. This is shift backslash, this is saying or is all heroes empty or is local storage dot all heroes is it null some instances and browsers will count it as null if there's nothing inside of that local storage object or it could be that local storage dot all heroes is undefined So the heroes that we're trying to save might be undefined, they might be null, they might be empty. So if any of these is true, that's what this if is checking. If this or this or this or this is empty, a hero was never saved. Or else, yes, it was saved. There have been superheroes that were saved in our local storage. So let's assume we have not saved any heroes yet. There is no all heroes list in local storage. Therefore, let's save our first hero to local storage. We need to do another if else statement here. Because then now we need to deal with, are those fields empty or not? I don't want to try to save a hero where the fields are empty. I want to save their, their real name, their hero name, and all of that stuff. And if that's empty, I don't, I don't want to save that. I want to force the user to fill in all those items before that can be saved. So this first if, if the person filled in all items in that form, ready to save a hero. Or else, else one or more fields are empty. So what we're checking here, name real if there's something typed into name real space double ampersand name hero space double ampersand superpower double ampersand super origin so we're saying if something has ty been typed into name real and something has been typed into name hero and 
something has been typed into superhero and something has been typed into super origin, we're ready to save a hero. All fields have been typed in. Or else one or more of them is false. Maybe they didn't type anything into super origin, so that would be false. They typed in something into everything else, so those would be true. Well, in this statement, I have and, so you have to fill in all of these items. All of these have to be true. Above, we had or. Any one of them needed to be true. If the all heroes list is empty, that's enough that I need to say uh, we haven't saved anything yet. All right, so we're in this part of the if statement. We have confirmed that all fields have been saved. So we'll create a variable called a hero. This is an object which is a new instance of superhero. Superhero is made from name real, comma, name hero, comma, super power, comma, super origin. So by checking these previous lines, what is the value that the person typed into real name, store it as name real, and pass it into the superhero object constructor? So we're creating a new hero with these values, a new object. I'm going to make a comment here for a function that doesn't exist yet, but what I want is that after the hero is created, I want to clean out that form. I want to clear out the form. They typed in the Peter Parker name, they did all of that, they clicked save, I want those fields to be cleaned out. So this is going to call a function that doesn't exist yet. So I'll just write it here as a comma and write a note here. Remember to create this function. All right, so we've got a hero, then we've got all heroes, array, dot push. We've seen this before. We're going to store in order the latest hero created into the all heroes array. So that's a hero. The current hero that I just created, store it into the array, all heroes. So we've seen variations of this before, but here's the new thing. After we add an item to that array, I want to save the heroes into local storage, into the more permanent memory of the browser. We do that by saying local storage dot all heroes equal to. So we're going to assign a value to the all heroes object in local storage. Local storage can only store strings, and we're about to save an object. A hero is an object, so we need to turn that object into a string. So we have JSON, the pop-up might tell you here, JSON, an intrinsic object that provides functions to convert JavaScript values to and from JavaScript object notation format, JSON format. We'll have a lesson on JSON later, but JSON, J-S-O-N, is JavaScript Object Notation. It's a string of information, not an object. So we need to run JSON object dot stringify. Pretty funny word, stringify. Turn something into a string to be used as JSON format. And what we're turning into a string is the all heroes array. Instead of being a JavaScript object, we've simplified it, so to speak, into a string. And then, after all of this conversion, it is stored into our All Heroes local storage object. On screen, I want to tell the user in the L show result div, I want to write some text content there and say saved we saved that hero. Getting back to the else, else one or more fields are empty. We need to tell the user, please fill all the fields. Before this can be saved, these fields need to be all filled in. So we'll tell the user, please enter all fields. 
All of this if else is regarding have all the fields been filled in. So it might be a good idea to write a note and if else checking if all fields are filled in. I write a note there because we've got another else that ends another if. Well, this is for a different purpose. And if else checking if we have never saved to local storage. That's what that first if else was about. We were in the first if block because we had never saved user information yet, hero information yet. So we have to deal with else. Yes, we have saved hero information before, so let's add more to it. This one's a little trickier because what we need to do is, if we are in this else block, else a superhero was saved, we need to retrieve what superheroes were already saved and then add more to that and then store it again. So first we'll check again if all of the fields have been filled in or not. We can copy and paste, but I think it might be easier just to write it again. So I'm writing again, was there a name real filled in and a name hero filled in and a superpower filled in and a super origin filled in? Let me write the else part. That one's a little easier. Else, no, not all fields were filled in. And therefore, to the user, I'll just copy and paste it this time. Uh, I want to say, please enter all fields. So I'll just bring that in again. But here's the part that's new. In the if part, yes, all fields have been filled in. All fields filled in. So retrieve any saved heroes, then add a new hero, then save again. So first we'll say variable all heroes array temp is a temporary copy of the heroes that have been saved. That is equal to local storage dot all heroes. This is retrieving the list of all heroes in the local storage object. But this list of all heroes has become a string back on line 93. It has not come back to us as an original array. It's not an object anymore. So we need to do the opposite of json.stringify. If json.stringify creates a string out of an object, then we have the opposite, create an object out of a string. And it would have been nice that it was called json.objectify, like stringify, but they called it something else. So I have to do json dot parse, open parentheses, close parentheses. And those parentheses are all around that local storage object. So local storage dot all heroes is basically retrieving what has been stored in local storage, the object called all heroes. We will then parse it, which I would have called objectify, just to be the opposite of stringify. We're turning it back into a real object in JavaScript that we can work with. Once we've got all heroes temp, what we can do then is create again a hero. It's a new instance of superhero based on the items that the user provides. Again, making a note here, we will have to clear that form. 
but from a function that doesn't exist yet. And this time, all heroes temp dot push a hero. So before we had all heroes dot push from the array created the very first time. But now because we're in this else section, that means a list of heroes has already been saved before, so we need to retrieve it. That's all heroes temp. We need to parse it so it's an object. So all heroes is an object, it is an array. So I'm going to push the new hero into that temporary array. Then I need to save it back to local storage. So where I had line 93, local storage all heroes, stringify all heroes, I have to have something very similar. Local storage dot all heroes equal to json dot stringify all heroes temp. Temp is the one with the latest version of heroes being saved. And then display on screen also the same message that this has been saved. I'll copy that one. So I've got all of this code that should run when I click the Save button. But technically, it has not been attached to the Save button yet. Nothing knows to run function Save yet. Even though, yes, we did create L button Save, there is nothing that will trigger it running. So we need to create the event listener. After the end of our function Save name, I should have added a comment there and function save name. After the end of that, we need to create some event listeners. LBTN save dot add event listener. Upon a click, comma, run the function save name, comma, false for bubbling. Now we can start testing it. I refresh my code, no errors, fill in Peter Parker, for example, hero is Spider-Man, superpower is Spidey Sense, origin is bitten by a radioactive spider. Notice how the character count is not decreasing yet, and that's because I have not set that up yet. There's no event waiting for that yet. There's also no event in pressing Enter to save this yet. I still have to click the Save button. I clicked Save. I get some feedback that says Saved. But I did save something. The form has not been cleaned out, so I don't get that feedback because I don't have function clear yet. But it seems to be working. To confirm that it's working, what I can do in the Google Console here is I can go view all data that's being stored. In Google Chrome, I've been looking at the console view this whole time for errors. But there's a screen also that will let you look at this deeper data. You'll find it under application. If you don't see application right away, you'll have to click that double arrow and you'll see application or pull out that column there, application. So here's various bits of data that are stored internally in the browser. And one of them is right there, local storage. If you open up local storage, click the triangle, you'll see that this file, click there, has an all heroes key and a value of what I've stored so far. Name real, name hero, superpower, super origin. So I have stored one character so far. I'm going to click back to console. I'm going to close the browser completely. And I'm going to run the browser, run the project again. So that was a completely new run of the project. Then I'll F12 to open the console and switch to application. It still shows that what I've stored previously in local storage is still there. So it's going to be a matter of retrieving what I've already created. If you have any errors, make sure to check your console output to tell you what number, what line number to go check out. 
All right, next up, what we need to do is clear out that form. This clear form is here, uh, but it's not doing anything. So I will uncomment clear form on both of my areas of save name. And next, it's time to create that function. So function clear form. This is end of function clear form. I need to set the value of all of those fields to empty and other things. So document.getElement by ID. This is our in real name. Set its value to empty. So this is quotes with nothing in the middle. And the same thing for the others. So this will empty out all the fields after you've filled in a name. And I want to add a couple of things here that'll make a little bit more sense in just a moment. L super origin dot disabled equal to false. This is the opposite at the moment. In a little bit, I'll create the function that keeps track of how many characters were written. After they reach the maximum characters, the super origin input box will become disabled. They can no longer type anything in that box. Well, the opposite is, if I clear the form, I want to start over. I want it to then not be disabled. So this is doing the opposite of something we haven't done yet. I also want to reset the car display text content back to whatever our maximum cars are. Right now, the characters do not decrease, so it's kind of moot, but eventually it will. So here's a note. As you are working on your project, you may find it useful to sometimes delete what has already been saved to keep testing it. So if you go back to Chrome and you go to Application, you'll see that in your file, you've got some local storage saved, and I've got All Heroes. So what you can do is select that Local Heroes, that All Heroes local object, and then click the Delete Selected. So when you refresh it, you have nothing there. When you run it, then you can test it again and again to see if you're on the right track. So for example, here I can test if my fields get cleared out. Now eventually I'm going to not really write anything real, I just want to save something. So I'll just write something in each of these fields, save. I get the text that says saved, the fields are cleaned out, and I can go check in my application that All Heroes has something saved. So it might behoove you to simply delete this stuff, refresh it, and then keep testing. Next up, I want this character count to be paid attention to. So after clearing the form, I want to create some event listeners. L super origin dot add event listener. This time I'm waiting for a key down. Every time a key has been pressed down, comma, function, character count car count. This function will count how many characters you have left. While I'm here, I'll also create l form hero dot add event listener key down function change form. So the first event listener is checking the number of characters I have left. The second event handler is waiting for a, if an enter was pressed. All right, so backing up, we will define function car count. So we need to check a few things here. Var text entered, comma, enter, 
counter, comma, enter, last key. Now these are variables I'm creating that I'm not setting them to anything yet. Because next I'm going to set text entered to document dot get element by ID in super origin dot value. What is the value of what the person is typing into that origin box? Counter then is set to max characters minus text entered dot length and then L car display dot text content is equal to counter. So we define what the counter is based on our total um, maximum number of characters that can be typed. Subtract that by how many characters have currently been typed. Display that counter on screen in the all in the L car display element. Well, the whole point of that is if counter is less than or equal to zero, then L super origin dot disabled true. So here's that opposite of what I talked about earlier. Line 126, L super origin display disabled false. So when we clear the form, let us keep typing into that origin box. And the opposite is when we run out of characters less than or equal to zero, when we run out of characters, then disable that box. We don't need an else because the result of else is continue to type. Now, if I try to test it at this point, I'll get some errors because I've defined over here change form, but I haven't actually created a change form. So I'll do that next. This is another rather short one, function change form. This one's a little bit different because it takes an E element object it takes an event and what I'm checking here is if e dot key code is equal to 13 that's the enter key if at any point the form changes check that the key pressed was 13 or the enter key. If that happens, then run function save name. So in the event of a pressing of the enter key, which is key code 13, save. Let's check it. Refreshing everything, cleaning out the local storage for full test. So again, I, I don't quite care to type anything at the moment, just stuff. Oh, there it is. Look, it's counting down just like I wanted. And at a certain point when we reach the limit, it should then stop letting us type stuff. Here it comes. There we go. I got past the maximum value so that if kicked in and it disabled it. If I do reset, it brings it back. So again, I'll type some stuff here just for testing purposes. Click Save, get the feedback of saved, and then I can check in the application that stuff has been saved. Lastly, it's time to display that stuff on screen. I'll create the event listener, LBTN show. On the event of a click, run the function fn show name so that means we need to create that function
So showing name will be similar to saving a name in that we need to check, have names been saved in local storage? If they haven't, there's nothing to display on screen. If there have been names saved, then we display them on screen. So here's our if else. We'll say no names to display. Say here else, yes, names to display. And this is all of our end of if else checking to display names or not. So we don't really do anything under if, if we meet the conditions. The condition will be local storage dot all heroes triple equals empty or local storage dot all heroes triple equals null or local storage dot all heroes triple equals undefined. If any of those are true, then there's nothing to display. There's no name saved. So the good stuff happens under else. We need to retrieve what has been stored in local storage. So var all heroes array is equal to JSON dot parse whatever is inside of local storage dot all heroes. We'll create a, a new variable that will be a string str equal to the beginnings of a table. So we'll start the table tag. We've got a class, table style. Now be careful here, I'm using single quotes because I've got these single quotes inside of double quotes. I cannot use double quotes inside of double quotes that will break the string. Make sure those are single quotes. Still within the double quotes, we create a table row that ends a table row. Then we've got our first table heading, th, th pair. In this first heading, we will have the real name. In the next th, the next table heading, I will have hero name. In the next th, the next table heading, column, we can have power. And then lastly, origin. So that's going to create a table with those columns. We need to loop several times to display each of those items, however many of times we have saved in the array. So we're going to have a for loop right here. I'll fill in the for loop in a moment, because after the for loop, I want to then continue the string, make sure that's a plus equals, very important. I want to continue the string by ending the last TR that we'll create and the table as a whole. All of that will be written to the L show results as HTML. So this time I'll do inner HTML equals string. So this is going to be a whole table rendered as HTML in that div. Well, I've started to build a table line 156, and then I need to loop X number of times throughout my array of superheroes. So var is equal to zero. Start from the zero with item in the array. 
semicolon i less than all heroes array dot length semicolon i plus plus so as long as we have heroes in this sort of temporary array loop and what we're going to loop is build a table row by row so to the string we do plus equals we're going to keep adding to it we're going to create a new table row oh so now that i see this actually i've got a little mistake here sorry um let me finish this here uh, this pair of table row elements is what i meant down here under ending the table row and the table so sorry back up right there we are ending the whole table which starts back on 156 then we're building row by row and that's the ending of the of the row tr not the one down there well what we're displaying is a cell where we will say all heroes array i dot name real from the zeroth item in the array display the real name in this cell which coincides with the real name cell above it now before i go further this obviously needs to be dynamic dynamically generated and right now it's a string so we need to do these shenanigans of breaking the string so i'm going to stop right here quote space plus then plus space quote start a cell then stop the html and write some javascript then continue the html so knowing that on these next lines i'm going to start another table cell quote and plus all heroes array i dot name hero plus quotes end that cell and then do the same thing and that cell to start a new cell so I can display all heroes array I value of superpower continue the string next line start another cell all heroes array i value dot super origin plus quote and the cell and then end of line semicolon so loop x number of times to create a row of information with its various cells put all of that into the string close the table we created and then finally render that whole table as html on screen i'm going to refresh my browser no errors again doesn't matter that i write real names at the moment since i'm constantly doing it save show get the table So to test it a little bit more legitimately, I'm going to clean out my, my local storage, refresh that console. Okay, I'll fill it in for real. Gwen Stacy, hero name, spider Gwen, superpower, spidey sense, origin, instead of Peter Parker, she was bitten by a radioactive spider. I can press enter. That saves it, so it did capture my enter. I can show. I 
can add another character. I can save, I can show, and I see more results. And I see that under my application, all of that's stored. I can close the browser completely. I can load it up, go directly to show, and I get results. So this is what you'll be creating on your own. This lesson deals with events and with other familiar elements. Check online for the full information on your homework and deadlines. And this has been Victor Campos. I'll see you next time.